This is module three, lesson one, representing relations. After this lesson, you need to be able to represent relations and choose and interpret appropriate scales for the axes and origins of graphs. Let's learn relations. You can use math to represent the relationship between two sets of numbers. For example, suppose you recorded the number of minutes you spent driving for your driver's training course each day for a week. You may use the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to represent the days, or maybe the names of those days, and the set 30, 45, 20, 40, 45, 90, and 60 to represent the minutes that you drove each day. The relationship between the sets pairs each day with the time driven for that day. The pairing of those numbers is called a relation, and here the set of days is the domain while the set of times is called the range. We'll focus more on domain and range a little bit later. So a relation is just a set of ordered pairs. The first set of numbers in the ordered pair is the domain. The second set of numbers in that ordered pair is called the range. A relation can be represented in multiple ways. First, a mapping illustrates the relationship between domain and range by showing how each element of the domain is paired with each element in the range, and it uses an arrow to point from one to the other. An equation shows the relationship between the domain and the range, where substituting a value in from the domain results in the value from the range. The x values in the domain and resulting y values can be written as ordered pairs and are called solutions of the equation because they make the equation true. Now let's look at a couple different ways how a relation might be presented to you. So below we have a mapping, a table, a graph, and an equation, all for the same relation of 3, 5, negative 4, negative 2, and 0, 2. In our mapping, we can see the domain and the range are labeled. So the domain is our x values. So if I put in 3, I get out 5. 3 is paired with 5. That's where that coordinate that we had originally negative 4 was paired with negative 2, and 0 was paired with 2. We can see in the table, it's pretty much written in the same way, but without the arrows. Our x is our domain, y is our range, our x value of our coordinate is paired with the y value. For the graph, it's a little more difficult to tell, but these coordinates that are graphed here are the same ones that are up. So if this is 3, 5, 3 over, 5 up. This one is 0 over and 2 up. And the last one was at negative 4 over and 2 down. So again, we have the same three ordered pairs, this time graphing. And for our equation, the equation is just the rule to take you from the first number to the second. So if I plug in 3, 3 plus 2 is 5. So plugged in 3, got out 5. That's showing that first coordinate, 3, 5. If I plug in negative 4, I get out negative 2. If I plug in 0 for x, I get 2 for y. Example 1, representations of a relation. Use the given coordinates. Part A, express the relation as a table, graph, and mapping. So using these coordinates, first let's make a table. When I'm making a table, I'm going to try to put the x values in order. So I'm going to look through and figure out which one's smallest. So I'm going to do that one first. Negative 3 is the smallest. I only need to look at the x values. What number is it paired with? It is paired with negative 5. Then my next smallest x is 0. 0 was paired with 4. Then 2 was paired with 0. And finally, 3 was paired with negative 5. So here is our ordered pairs shown as a table. For the graph, we just take each ordered pair and plot it. So 2, 0. 2 over 0 up, 0, 4, 3, negative 5, and negative 3, negative 5. I just plotted the coordinate where it should go, and that shows our relation as a graph. For a mapping, we're going to take all the first coordinates, kind of like we did with a table, and put them in order from least to greatest on the left side. Then we're going to take all of the y coordinates and put them from least to greatest on the right side. Notice I had negative five as a y coordinate twice, but I only wrote it one time down here. We don't need to repeat the numbers. 
For a mapping, I just draw an arrow showing what number in the domain goes to which number in the range. So two goes to zero. Zero goes to four. Positive three goes to negative five. And so does negative three. And that is our relation shown as a map. Check your understanding. List the ordered pairs in each relation. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. For the table, we had negative two, three, negative one, negative five, and four, seven. These are just put in order from the lowest x value to the greatest x value. For the graph, we have negative two, negative four, negative one, three, and five, one. For our mapping, we have negative six, that goes to negative one, one went to five, and five goes to negative one. So writing it as a relation, we list out the ordered pairs. Let's learn the coordinate system. When graphing on the coordinate system, the scale of the graph refers to the distance or interval between tick marks on the x and y axes. For example, if one tick mark represents five units, then the scale of the graph is five. Each axis may have a different scale. A scale of one tick mark equals one unit is frequently used in mathematics. However, using a different scale may make it easier to graph a given set of ordered pairs. This will be especially true as we start trying to graph larger number values for coordinates. Example three, use appropriate scales. Graph the coordinates. Those are some pretty large coordinates especially when our graph only has about eight units to the right and left and 10 units up and down. So we need to determine a scale where we can put all of these on that grid. So to determine an appropriate scale, we're gonna look at the values that we have and fit them in there as best as possible while using as small of a scale as possible. We could easily fit all of these on there if we just counted both ways by hundreds. However, all the points would be close together and we might not be able to tell which is which. So to do this, step one, figure out what the x and y coordinates are between. So the x coordinates, that first number there, we have negative 36 is our lowest value and positive 38 is the largest value. For our y values, our lowest is at negative 91 and our greatest is at 95. So we need to make sure going up and down that we are able to fit both of those in. So deciding an appropriate scale, we're gonna make it the next largest value in both directions. So negative 36, in order to be able to fit on that, I have to have at least negative 40. And for 38, I have to have at least positive 40. So I can make my x-axis go between negative 40 and positive 40. And then for the y-coordinates, I need to go down to at least negative 91 and up to at least 95 so let's do negative 100 to positive 100. Next, determining our scale, we need to think about how many tick marks there are. So on my coordinate grid, there are about eight tick marks going each direction from left to right, and there's about 10 tick marks or little boxes going up and down. So when I'm doing this, I need to use eight boxes and get to 40, which means if I just count by fives, I can do that. A scale of five for the x-axis going left and right would be appropriate. There were 10 boxes going up and I need to get to 100. So each box needs to be 10 in order for us to fit everything we need. Our next step is to graph. So now that we have decided on our scales, let's label. Here I'm labeling every other as long as I know that I'm counting by fives left and right. And I'm going to label every other counting by tens going up. If you want to label every line, feel free to do so, but labeling every other line gets the same point across. Now I can plot my coordinates. So the first one was at 580, which would be about there. Then going through the rest, notice because we're not using a scale of one, many times our coordinates end up falling between the lines in the middle of a box. That's okay. Do your best to estimate approximately where it should be. Check your understanding of creating a scale. So when graphing these coordinates, select the most appropriate scale for the x-axis and the y-axis. 
Choose from the ones that are given. Pause the video now and complete the check. Let's check the answer. So for the x-axis, our low end is for negative 10, and the larger end only goes to 16. So it only goes from negative 10 to positive 16. So which of these would fit negative 20 to positive 20? That could work, but not with a scale of 1. Maybe if they did a scale of 2. So I'm going to say no to that one. Negative 12, that's less than 18. That is more. That could work. Let's check our other choices. Negative 12 to 18 with a scale of 6. If you did that, negative 12 would only be 2 units over because you're counting by 6. And 18 would be 3 units to the right because you're counting by 6. That's not enough spaces. And same with the last negative 20 to positive 20, but counting by 10s. That's only 2 units to the left, 2 units to the right. B would be our most appropriate. That would give us at least 6 units to the left and 9 units to the right. For the y-axis, our low end is at negative 27 and our high end is at 32. So we need to have it start at at least negative 30, which all of those do. And it has to go to above 32. So it can't be B this time because that only goes to 30 and that's not high enough. Just like before, counting by ones from negative 30 to 35, that's too many boxes for you to have to draw. Counting by fives or counting by tens. So just like last time, if I count by tens, that only puts me three units to the left and four to the right compared to counting by fives would put me six units to the left and seven to the right. If you're not sure what I'm talking about of how I got how many squares over, if I need to get to 35, counting by five, that's going to mean I had to use seven units. All I did was divide. 35 divided by 5 is 7. And that would tell me how many lines or tick marks I would need to draw. You don't want too many, but you also don't want too few. Example 4. Choose an appropriate origin. The table shows the total snowfall in January for Boston. Part A. Choose an appropriate origin. Let the x-axis represent the years since 2005, and the y-axis represent the total snowfall. If we have these two things, then 0, 0, that origin, represents the year 2005 and 0 inches of snow. So by saying that 0 on the x-axis actually represents 2005, we can skip ahead to 2005 spaces. And even if we were to count by, say, like hundreds to get there, then when we get to what we actually need for these years, they're all going to be jammed together. So we need to count by ones but we don't actually need to start till 2005. So we're gonna say that the origin represents 2005, just so we can start there and not have to count to get there. So now choosing an appropriate scale, the snowfall was between one and 43.3. So we need to go from zero, we'll say to 45. The easiest way to go from zero to 45, we don't wanna count by ones, let's count by five. So each tick mark going up, will represent five inches. Part C, graphing the data on the coordinate plane. So on our x-axis, those are the years since 2005, and now we can count by ones. And then going up, we have our inches of snowfall, counting by fives. Now I can plot my data points. So in the year 2005, which is year zero, there were about 43 inches of snow. In 2006, year one, there was about eight inches of snow. 2007, year two, there was only about one inch. Year three in 2008, about eight again. As I keep going, I can plot the rest. Example five, interpret scales and origins. Our real context here is social media. The average numbers of posts per day on a social media site each year is given in the table. Interpret the meaning of the axes, scale, and origin of the corresponding graph of the data. So first, let's interpret the meaning of the axes. So the x-axis and the y-axis. The x-axis represents the years since 2008. That's what's labeled down here. Again, like in our last example, we have to say years since 
2008, if we're starting in 2008, because we can't start at year zero, count all the way to 2008 and then still have a scale of one. That's not really possible. Our y-axis is the average posts per day in millions. Looking at our graph, let's determine our scale. So on the graph, it counts by ones. So one mark is equal to one year. For the y-axis, we are counting up by 50. But remember, this is in millions. It tells us the unit. So each one of those is 50 million posts. So the origin then is going to represent the year 2008 and zero posts per day. Check your understanding, read through the situation, then in part A, interpret the meaning of the X and Y axis in the context and determine the scale. Then in part B, interpret the meaning of the origin. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. First, the x-axis represents the years since 2001, and it has a scale of one year. It's counting up by ones. The y-axis is talking about the circulating coins produced. It tells us in the table there. And it's counting up by twos, but if we look at our unit, it is two billion. So two billion coins. What does the origin mean? It represents the year 2001 and zero coins produced.